Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm a woodworker running a small business out of my one-car garage. Today I'm going to make a small entryway stool for my father-in-law for their cottage. Watch along as I make a series of small mistakes that culminate in a project that turned out not too bad. Now first off, it's important to know that I've been planning this bench or stool or whatever it was going to be for months. I just couldn't decide what I wanted to make and how I wanted to make it. Finally, I got shamed into just getting something done. I really didn't have much of a plan here other than I knew the rough dimensions I was after, so I kind of just made it up as I went along. A while back, I had made an 8 foot wide console table with waterfall edges that, after gluing up, twisted pretty bad. I ended up cutting the legs off and am using these as the start of this project. It's nice to not have to mill up rough lumber this time. These boards were milled down to an inch and a half thick for that last project. So to start off, I'll be squaring up the one end and ripping square strips for the four legs. I want the stool to sit somewhere around 15 inches high. It's going to be used to sit on while you tie your shoes, so that seems like a pretty reasonable height. The top will be 10 inches deep and 16 inches wide, so I use the other leftover piece and make it so. I wanted the top to have a bit of a contour to it. To shape the top, I used this thin scrap of 3 quarter inch plywood to make a reference line. I knew that I wanted to start the contour around 2 inches from the outside on each side, so I made a mark 2 inches in and another one at the center point. I wanted to remove about a half an inch of material, so I made a mark at the center half an inch down from the top. I clamped up the plywood scrap onto the two outside lines and pulled back in the center until I hit my half inch deep mark. I then traced this curve with a pencil. It probably would have been easier to use something thinner like quarter inch plywood, but this is all I had kicking around and it worked okay. I did debate making a rotor sled to hog out all the material, but that seemed like quite a bit of work given the small size of this seat. I opted to try to cut the curve on the bandsaw. I think based on the smoke that was made during this cut that I should probably replace my bandsaw blade at some point soon. What do you think? This cut mostly went okay. I was able to follow the line well, but it was a bit of a challenge keeping the board perfectly vertical. I guess nothing that a bit of extra sanding won't handle. I used 80 grit sandpaper and worked on it for a half an hour or so until I had the bandsaw marks all removed and I was happy with the profile. Next up, I used a half inch round over bit to put a nice big round over on all the edges. As you can see here, I screwed up a bit and cut way too deep on the top side. I wasn't really sure what to do, so I just finished cutting it at this depth. More sanding and I was able to remove the hard edge the round over bit left and the profile I ended up with is pretty nice. I think a lot of this would have been easier if I did have a hand plane or something to remove larger amounts of material, but I was able to get it done with the sander. Now that I got a good start to the top, it was time to move over to the legs. I cut these down to just a little bit over my final length at the miter saw and got them ready for profiling. Initially my plan was to taper the legs, but given that they're only an inch and a half thick, I didn't want to go too too much thinner. I opted to use my 3 quarter inch round over bit to put a pretty heavy round over on each corner. I thought about going even bigger to make it completely round, but I wasn't sure exactly how to do that and how to rest it against the fence once the corners were gone. I wouldn't have a flat spot to rest on and I just wasn't sure how that would work. I ended up with a bit of a rustic looking profile to the leg. I decided to leave it like this and see how it looked after I cut the tenons. I figured I could change it if I wasn't happy with the overall look at that point. I bought this fancy tenon cutter from Lee Valley. I wanted to try to do a through tenon for this stool and thought round would suit the design better than a square tenon. 
that and I don't know how to make a square mortise yet. This seemed like a better plan all around. I bought the one inch tenon cutter and the instructions say you can use stock that is up to one and one eighth inch bigger than the cutter size. So I figured that with these inch and a half legs, I'd be able to start on the square side and make it into a circle. That didn't exactly work. I even broke out the instructions here to see what was happening. I adjusted the blade a few times before giving in and flipping the leg around so I could cut the tenon on the side the router bit had removed a bunch of material from. This worked much better. I think I probably had the cutter set to remove too much material after futzing around with it, but it seemed to work pretty well. A couple lessons I learned here. In the instructions, they pretty clearly state that the quality of the tenon you get is completely dependent on your ability to hold the drill straight and level. My ability to do so was so-so. My tenons were decent, but one of them ended up fairly off-center. Luckily, I had made five legs, so I was able to keep pressing forward. I put a link in the description to a cutter that is similar to the one I bought. I don't think this style leg suits every furniture design, but it's a pretty cool option to have. On the bottom of the seat, I marked out lines one and one half inch in from the outside edges for the center of my legs. Given the heavy round over and aggressive sanding I did, I really should have laid this out before when the edges were square. It was a bit of a pain to get the marks referenced off the outside and the same for each leg, but I was able to get it done. Lesson learned for next time that order of operations does indeed matter. I decided I wanted the legs to angle out to the side slightly. I have never angled the table in my drill press before, so it took a bit of futzing around to figure that out. I drilled the holes and scrap pieces and played around with a few angles before deciding on 5 degrees was the look that I wanted. When drilling into the actual seat, it's important to make sure that the bit is hitting the workpiece in the right direction. You don't want two of the legs to be angled in towards the center. I drilled the opposing legs, adjusted the fence, and drilled the other two. I had a bit of tear on the top of the seat, but nothing that a bit more sanding couldn't fix. Given the uneven length of the tenons and the weird shape of everything, I wasn't sure the best way to get the legs trimmed down to size. I decided to use the wall on my miter bench as a reference and just draw a line across each one. I set up a stop and used the miter saw to trim them all down. I knew this wouldn't be perfect, but they were still a fair bit long and I was able to trim them down after the stool was all glued up. I'm not sure if this was necessary, but the tenons fit super snug in the mortises, so I gave them a real quick rub with 80 grit sandpaper. My thinking here was a wee bit of room for glue might be nice. I put the glue on the tenons and a bit in the mortises and used my trusty mallet to drive everything home. Once the legs were in, they were in. I got them mostly lined up the way I wanted, but the angle of one leg was slightly off. I guess that one's going to have to go against the wall. Given how tight they were, I didn't think I needed to use clamps. I let it sit for about half an hour, and then I used my flush cut saw to trim the tops off the tenons before a bit more sanding to get them all smoothed out. I know this gets asked in every video, and I know we're all inundated with too many things to watch and too much stuff coming across our feeds, but I would really appreciate if you could take the time to give this a like if you found it enjoyable, maybe subscribe if you want to see what's coming next, and leave a note in the comments if there's something you want to let me know. I do appreciate it, and it really does make a difference. My table saw is the flattest thing in my shop, so I use that to help me level out the legs. I shimmed up the two shortest legs and got the stool sitting the way I wanted. I double checked with a level and everything looked good. Then I took a scrap of wood that was entirely too long for the task and I used it to mark a line around each leg. This gave me the line to cut to get all four legs to the same size and the stool sitting flat. I debated finding a way to use a power tool to trim the legs, but after a few minutes I realized that that was insane and pulled out my Ryan powered saw. This made short-ish work of the legs. They were quite close at this point. I hit one leg briefly with a sander to even it out, 
And then I took four pieces of 80 grit sandpaper and attached them to my table saw top with double sided tape. I set the stool on the sandpaper and rubbed it back and forth until the stool sat perfectly. I had a little bit of squeeze out in the leg joints that I cleaned up with a chisel and this horrible little Milwaukee sander. I bought it because it was well reviewed here on YouTube and I have to say I'm really not impressed. It doesn't really fit into gaps as well as I would like and when I use it to clean up squeeze out in corners it leaves behind awful scratches. It's apparently a random orbit sander and I didn't think that that was something they did. I know with my Festool ones or my other Milwaukee round one I just don't get scratches like this. Maybe let me know in the comments if I'm doing something wrong or if this is just a bad purchase. Okay, now that I'm done sanding, I gave the stool a thorough cleaning with my vacuum and then wiped it down with some of this fancy orange peel mineral spirit stuff. I'm not sure if it's really less toxic than normal mineral spirits, but it makes me feel a bit better. Once that was dry, I gave it a good coat of Osmopolix or Polyex or whatever it is in clear satin. I applied Polyex, Polyex, Polyx, Polyx, like I do Rubio Monocoat. I wipe it on with a white scotch brit pad, let it sit for about 5 to 10 minutes, and then I wipe it off with a clean rag. It's not what the can says to do, but it's what they said at the store I bought it from, and it seems to have worked out okay so far. And that's it. Over the course of a couple evenings, I took some maple from a failed project and turned it into something that is altogether not too bad. I think we can agree that Sandpaper is the real star of the show here. I hope you enjoyed watching along.